never works. Right. It's obvious that you've done that. So I say start off with a biblical premise that you, okay, for instance, do you see their t-shirts? We just talked about this today. It says, <laughs> she can't for anything. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Vanna. It says love. It says love. Love them anyway. Okay. And I had just said to today. I said that's a premise for a movie. Yep. Yeah. The, the notion of da -da 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 -da, anyway. Do it anyway. Even if you're not, you're gonna get spit on, and you're gonna get do it anyway. Like that's that, and start there. Now write a story that has that theme, and you won't be stuck. You know, with a movie about a guy on the beach and he rubs a lantern and genie, and then you're trying to figure out how God gets put in there, because it's ne it, it's always awkward and it never. So start with something that I say, in my opinion, start off with a, a biblical theme or premise first, and then write a story around that. Oh, right, there's this guy and he does a thing. And then I agree with Bob too that. It was when I write a script, I know where I'm going. You have to know where you're going. So when I did my cross-country <coughs> movie, I had the ending first. I knew where I was going. You're going to start on page one, but at least you know where you're going. Also, too, I don't force ideas. I'm sure they don't either, or maybe they try to. We all write differently. He's right. I, I, I don't sit down on a blank sheet of paper. Okay, I'm going to try to write something. I wait until I get an idea, then I sit down and start writing the scene. That's how I approach it. And I can tell if I'm trying to force something, I leave. I go work at a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to add more on this. The definition of a spec script is that calling card you use to try to get work. But if it is your passion project, like Never the Bride Was Mine, I have about 20 other scripts that are not. I'd be happy to let someone buy them, take them, make them without me. But that was one I wanted to protect because of the content of it and where it's kind of like Bruce Almighty. So can you imagine being told to diminish Morgan Freeman's role? That is exactly what they said to me, plus many other times that we've said no, where I, anytime I've used it as a calling guard, I've gotten job, many jobs off of it. A lot of them will say, can we make both? We'll hire you for this and make that. But usually when they got into the changes, I was like, no, I won't sell that, but I'll be happy to write your project for you. Um, but then, so if you have a passion project that you really wanna make and protect, especially if it's got a strong God message, write something else to sell so, and also write for hire so that you can get known then save your passion project to produce yourself like these guys do over here is so good that they get to keep that control i think we should make a new rule the writer should have the final say on the script <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute who knows, like the, who knows the script better yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> this will never happen from a writing directing standpoint i'll tell this little story as a writer director, you should also listen to your actors. <clears throat> so I yes. did a movie called The Secrets of John Lithisbury with Gavin oh. Brown, if you remember him. Yes. He's a half of my love boat. And so a month before we're gonna shoot the movie, I went over to his house. Gavin was a wonderful guy, very kind guy, Christian man. He's with the Lord. He passed away a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So he's he's a memorizer. So we're going through the script. Now, Rich, can I change the to the? In other words, he was afraid to change one word. I'm serious. <laughs> Kevin, yes. Whatever works, you know. <clears throat> so there was a scene he wanted to make a little addition. And I'm going to tell you what he wanted to add. And you're going to be the writer, director. You tell me if you like this. If not, be honest, say no. So here was the line, a little dust in Moses' lawn. And he goes in and sits down. And here's the original script. Do you live alone? Yes. Yes, I do. My wife passed away four years ago. Oh, sorry about that. Picks up the picture of her finest Christian woman ever know. The Lord let us be together 46 years. That seems like a long time. How much do I owe you? That was the original. And Gavin said, would you mind if I add this? I said, what is it? <clears throat> you live alone? Yes, yes, I do. My wife passed away four years ago. Well, that seems, sorry to hear about that. Finest Christian woman I ever know. The Lord let us be together 46 years. That seems like a long time. Seems short now. How much do I owe you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh. Dad, I hate it. Oh. No way I'm not putting that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we would go to screenings, and that little scene would emotions. come up, and Gavin would look at me, and I'd point at him. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, this is how I think scripts can improve. Yeah. Because 
let's face it, you as a writer director, you have the final say. I don't like it, I don't like it. But obviously, it's better. It makes the whole scene, that one little line. It's touching. So listen to your actors also. And, and listen to producers too, if you're not doing the writer director thing, because a lot of times they're right. And, uh, and, and directors too, a lot of times, you have, they give you notes that make your script better and you get credit for it, <laughs> okay? And it's the truth. I, um, I have a, I had a director, uh, I talked about this before, on Monday of this week, I had a director call me, through my agent, but she called me, and she said, she had read something, a uh, spec of mine, and said, I love this movie. It's the best script I've read in five years. I didn't believe her, but it was great. And, and, and she said, I want to make this. I have two notes. And I, you're, they're, again, your first, your first thought is, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she had two small, very small notes, like the Gavin line. Two very small notes, one for maybe three lines in one existing scene and one extra scene to add a little depth to one of the to one of the, the pivotal characters. They were both spectacularly good notes. And she said, can you do this? Because my agent has said, you know, he, don't, he doesn't write for free. And I said, yes, I'll do those. It'll take me two days, probably. And I will do these notes because whether you make the movie or not, I'm gonna leave them because they're that good. Don't discount other people's opinions, not opinions, their ideas. The best notes you can get are the notes from people who understand what you're trying to write. The worst notes you can get are from people who say, here's how I do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you have to be able to discern, to discern between those two things. Hi. Um, okay, this might be ending the, the day on a humorous note, hopefully not, but can you speak to uh, writers' agents and aggregators of job boards or, or companies that may showcase writers for producers to look at and find scripts and so forth. Um, yeah, particularly representation. I had four produced films before I got my manager, and I think six before I got my agent. Okay? I got them both through recommending recommendations from one from a director and one from a producer. And we had conversations and I said, hey, do you know somebody who might want to rep me? Um, agents look for writers with a track record of success because the agents field offers. It's the truth. Managers will look at new writers and you need to query managers with your work, your best work if you're looking for managers. Yeah, my journey was a little strange that I got an agent three days into moving to LA. I don't live there anymore, but I got a job writing um, a kid's show called Wild and Wacky, Totally Two Bible Stories with Frank Peretti. And so this agent heard about me and she's like, you got a job three days into town. She didn't realize it was six months in the works, but whatever. Um, and then so she took me on, but God told me to get out of that relationship a few years into it just because it was not, um, she was mostly working in nonfiction and it just wasn't working. I wasn't getting any work out of it. And so we stayed friends and I severed that relationship professionally. And then the ultimate gift came to me. And so I didn't have an agent when I got that job which worked out really well for me on the commission and uh, saving it all. And uh, like, there's an article about me in the Charlotte Observer back then during the shoot where I was quoted as a headline saying, God is my agent and he only charges 10%. <laughs> um, and I have not really had an agent since. Um, I did temporarily work with a manager that we worked with um, on a TV show called Mommy Land that didn't end up getting made with Pure Flix, but, um, other than that, I've never had representation because every job I get is word of mouth from the last jobs that I've had. And that's the best way to get work more so than an agent. My brother Rich needs to go because he didn't know this was an hour.